Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another edition of BA Select Start Base. Beautiful. We are back here today with another episode, and do we have a jam packed episode for you today? We have a lot to get through. Um, first of all, Dan, how you doing? Good. That's great. Um, we have a lot to talk about. We do. Um, the following episode will be contested under one fall. One fall. There we go. <laughs> it took me a second. I'm sorry. It's been a long day today. Um, yeah, that's. A, I don't remember if that was anywhere in last year's, but that's in every single match this year. That's kind of annoying, to be honest with you. Like, have you tried the old school arenas? Is it in there too? I don't remember. Okay, because see that that kind of like they breaks. take the modern day yeah. fans and throw them back there. I um, I did do I did uh, the original SmackDown arena, which I think I sent you a screen a screenshot of, but it was just the the fiend entrance. Yeah. Uh, but I don't remember if they said one fall during that one. So okay. So to investigate later. Because I know one, actually one neat feature is the Hell in a Cell. If you're in modern arenas, it's the red one. And if you're in old arenas, it's like the old school oh, one. Oh, that's so, cute. I nice little I touch. I didn't know that because I haven't played a Hell in a Cell match yet. Yet. Um, but yeah, so we have, uh, three, we have three parts to today's episode. First part is 2K's response to what we talked about last time, the glitch fest that was going on. Part two will be Dan the Man's review of WWE 2K20, because he's been playing it over the I've, I've been playing it. Yeah. The Shant still hasn't gotten his, his, his copy yet. Black Friday when it's half off. And after all of the patches have been released, but... Hopefully. <laughs> um, and the third part will be we have both compiled a list of 10 things that we feel like if they were implemented, added, or patched in would make WWE 2K20 or future WWE 2K games much, much better than what we have now. So let's address the first part of today's episode. Um, finally, after about three, four days, yeah. after all the glitches and yeah, the... they released the game and then there was, a, yeah, about half a week before there was an official response. And at first when I saw the response, I, I sent it to you, Dan, and I was like, in the words of The Rock, finally we get a word, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, if, if you can read it, then we can maybe go verbatim off of that, because I'm just, I'm paraphrasing here, but... There we go. Uh, we are listening closely to the feedback that's been shared regarding WWE 2K20, and are aware of the concerns some players are reporting. Some. We're working hard to investigate these concerns and address them as necessary. We expect to have an initial patch ready in the next two weeks, with others to follow. Stay tuned to WWE Games' social media channels for more information. Thoughts? Um. You might feel differently. I don't know. That might be good enough for you. I mean, but... it's very political. Um, where it's very, uh, we're gonna look into it, guys. We're gonna look into it. Calm down. It, it, it's to pacify, to pacify the masses. Yeah. Now. I'll give a, just like a, a one or two sentence uh, reaction from somebody who has played the game. Okay. Um, there are some glitches. Um, I haven't had anything. I haven't had anything that has impacted my overall gameplay. Like I haven't had a match freeze out. Okay. So I haven't had something like that. Um, one thing I'll address in here, which isn't really a glitch, it's more of an execution of something we'll talk about more. But, okay. Um, I, during during the Money in the Bank ladder match, at one point a ladder disappeared under the ring and then showed back up a couple minutes later. But we still had three other ladders, um, so it didn't impact my ability to play. Right. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure there's some people who are experiencing a heavier glitch flow than what I am. I know I've gotten some of the, the kind of... The stuff that they have, that we were aware of from the get-go. Like, m during my career, that first scene when they're driving down the, the road and their hair's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. My, one of my characters has short hair, so it didn't matter. It didn't matter, him, yeah. But the girl, her hair was, like, flapping yeah. her face for a minute. I did have one scene where uh, her eyes were, in the, were, like... Undertaker? Rolled, were, like, rolled into the back of her head. That got... That fixed itself. And then what was the other one? It was... Well, you sh I think you showed me your first glitch where there was like this almost two by four going through um, yeah, your character. Th yeah, that was, I didn't even end up creating that that character, but my first attempt at creating the character, it looked like, I, I can't remember the name of it, it's a, sto it's a story about a guy who was working on the railroad and a spike went through his head and yeah. then it like, like he was still alive, yeah, but yeah, it yeah. affected his personality. Right, yeah. And it looked like that, where it was just like, all the way through his head, and I think... 
it carried over to like when I was like setting up his move set or his entrance. I don't remember what oh it my was. God. But this like rod was going through him and I went, This is this is fucked up. Well, you know what they said, there's a fine line between a good game and a bad game. Um and then obviously the one I sent you earlier today, I changed m- one of my my career superstars attire. Uh-huh. And I gave him this like Halloween themed belt and changed the colors and it just like creates a tail behind Oh him. yes, yes. That that was I'm not going to lie, that was kind of neat. I I was on the fence over whether or not it was intentional and I'm 99% sure it's not intentional. But if that was like something that they did while designing that, they were like, "Oh, what if it makes like a ghost trail behind yeah. him?" It'd be kind of funny, yeah. Because it does seem to have limits. Yes. So like, I I run and it only gets to to be I don't know what. Like that, it's snakes. It, yeah, it would be. It would probably be like ten feet of fabric. Yeah. Is what it kind of stretches to, and that then it stops. Yeah. But uh, kind of, it was neat. Like if it's a glitch, fine. But I thought that was actually pretty neat. <laughs> But, yeah, no, I mean, I haven't had any catastrophic glitches yet, not to say that I couldn't, but may- yeah. maybe some players is to really address the people who are having, yeah. like, terrible gameplay experience. Well, because the funny thing is they know for a fact that almost everybody is is getting these glitches, so yeah. the way that they address it is like, well, some people are getting it, not everyone. It's like, bro... That's why I said it's very political. Um... The way that they're addressing it, where they said, well, some people, because they don't want to come out and have it be bl- plastered on the internet forever, yeah. saying, we understand that all all of you guys are having an issue with the game. We put out a shitty game. They don't want to have that right. floating around in the ether. So I, I get it. But go on. So, yeah, I mean, uh, we can beat that dead horse all we want, but, yeah. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, we'll see when they roll out that initial patch and others to follow to see how they resolve these yes. issues. Um, quick side note. Yes. Um, I figured, I, I don't know if you've seen this, um, but I can now confirm that the fairy arena that we saw mm-hmm. is actually the Winterfest arena, which is part of my career. My career, okay. Um, and so there's like ice sculptures all around and it's it's supposed to be sort of Christmassy. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was it. That's all I wanted to interject okay. for, for that. Uh, which which sucks because I've heard that in Create an Arena, like we were hoping to get all those parts, um, but apparently like they haven't really touched the Create an Arena. Yeah. So there's also n- the New Day Arena, which I was not aware was a thing, but there's like balloons and it's all rainbow. But again, if you go to Create an Arena, none of those parts are accessible. Which is silly. Yes. Um, but let's move on to the second part. So Dan, um, you've been playing the game for a few days now, and you you and I have kind of been texting back and forth. Um, give us your overall review of 2K20. Just, you've played the My Career, you've been playing the Bump in the Night, you've been playing Exhibition. Your overall review of 2K20. Okay, so... What to start with? Let's start with Bump in the Night. Okay. So, I'm, I have mixed, I have mixed reviews on that. So, I pre-ordered the game, I bought the Deluxe Edition, so I got that yeah. from the get-go. And we had talked about the fact that... Uh, oh, I heard you have to do stuff to get the the characters. And so, on one hand, I I get it. You're making, you're taking the pre order and you're giving it a gameplay experience. the The thing to unlock the fiend was not hard. So, if it had been like a a difficult challenge, I would have been pissed. Okay. Because that's one of the reasons I bothered to pre order the yeah. game was, oh, sure, I'll get the fiend character. That's great. Um. But I, they, they didn't just give it to you. They said, oh, and now play this tower. Right, yeah. Um, all of the towers were cake. They were all easy. One of the things that, again, is going to come back when we do the, the list is that they give you a mini showcase, which I'm assuming all four of these uh, originals packs are going to follow the same trend. Okay. Where it's pretty much going to be a showcase, five towers, and you just unlock the shit by doing that. Okay. Uh, the showcase is, it's fun, it's the conceptually, conceptually it's fun, because you're playing as Finn Balor, trying to be recruited into Bray Wyatt's family, which in, apparently includes Wicked Aleister Black and the Bludgeon Brothers and blah, blah, blah. Um, 
I got through the the Wicked Alistair Black match and was immediately put in a one on two, not a one on tag, a one on two handicap match right. against the Bludgeon Brothers, and they're bigger than me. They outclass me with number of reversals. Yep, and they're in the ring at the same time. Right. So I I think I screwed up one and I just canceled it and restarted the match and then the second one I just got obliterated like because the the problem is like my gameplay methodology a lot of times is I'll run and I'll do the the running strike immediately yeah yeah and you can't even do that against them because they're heavier than Finn okay so like you run and you try to like like elbow block Rowan and he just no sells you and then Harper grapples you and you're right. like well I guess I'm already gonna lose yeah. so that one's frustrating it's it's one of those situations where I feel like maybe reversals should be shut off yes there should be certain situations where those things um where where the the game is structured to do things differently yes and again I'll talk about that yes. more but it's okay. Uh, I like the 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 de- little details and the unlockables and the the general narrative. It's very arcadey that okay. chunk of stuff. Okay. Which again, I'm gonna come back to later. Um, in the regular gameplay, uh, I have predominantly done. Uh, I did create a, a wrestler yesterday. Uh, I did, and I and I have been playing through my career. And so with my career, which I'll talk about next, uh, the story's cute. It's all over the place, um, which I don't mind, f- given the fact that it's a, a WWE game, and so as opposed to being very linear, they tried to make it a little more dynamic. Yeah, good. And there's one little Easter egg that I do enjoy, and that's that they reference Buzz from last year yeah. all the time, and he, at one point he'll leave you a voicemail, and he says, hey man, saw your match, good job, blah, blah, blah. Hopefully one of these days we'll get to face off. Funny how we always end up on the opposite show, and it's because <laughs> then you'll never see him. Yeah. Uh, but it's the same voice actor from last year, so I thought that was funny. Um, It'd be funny if maybe in 2K21 or somewhere down the line you kind of have like both characters like intertwine, cross each other. Yeah. So. Well, and maybe that's what they do next year is they have you re- essentially recreate the character of Trey and the character of Buzz, and then they yeah. crisscross. Yeah. Um, Did you play Showcase? No, I haven't touched the oh, okay. showcase. Uh, what is the show? Oh, the girls. Yeah. What is the showcase? Uh, Dan? Um, wh- it's not my question. Oh, Four oh, Horsewomen. Right. That's what you mean. Oh, I uh, <laughs> So, no, the story is kitschy. It's fun. The, the it, Some of it's set in the future. Right. So once you get into the story, you 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 realize you're set in the future. Um, you've got uh, time progressing to where... Uh, certain superstars are in certain roles that are not active performers anymore. And it's kind of funny to see that. And it's fun. Uh, Some things don't totally line up timeline-wise, such as, I'm going to drop this in there, it's not a huge spoiler, but Mickey James still being an active competitor while other people have already moved out of their role. Um, God bless you, Mickey James. (laughs) Um, but no, it's it's fun because it takes you through their entire their entire list, and it's done with a, a an interesting narrative spin on it. Um, Was there any glitches in my career? Nothing, nothing catastrophic. Okay. Um, that's, I, that, I know there was one with AJ talking, but his mouth is not moving. You just hear his voice. So that's all of the backstage things. Okay. But every time that somebody talks backstage in like a non cut scene. Like an an, an illegitimate cutscene, yeah. their mouths don't move, okay. which is weird. Yes, and I don't like that. Um, but yeah, I mean, those are the big things that I've actually dabbled in. Gameplay isn't terrible. I like. I, I'm happy that you can still do. You can still switch out from the little submission mini game oh, okay. where you have to yeah. f- follow the circle. Yeah. To the button. The tab. button. Yeah. So that's still there. Um, the triangle th- uh, reversal as opposed to the trigger is fine. It's not that difficult to get used to. I don't like that you have to press both square and X For to do finisher. finishers yeah. and signatures. The reversal system uh, needs to be overhauled. 
it, it, I don't I don't think it's constructive to um, good gameplay. How is it different from 2K19? It's exactly the same. I didn't like it last oh, okay. year either. Um, between being limited, because uh, like, it's not even like you always start a match and you have the same number as your yeah. opponent. So sometimes you'll fight somebody who's got four or five, and especially going through my career, you'll start out with two. Oh, wow. And so then... You can't turn it turn off reversal limits in my career? I don't know. I didn't do it. If you go on options and turn off reversal limit, I think it turns it off for Maybe all Maybe that's what I need to do then. Hopefully that'll carry over to the to the Finn Balor showcase. Probably not. Probably not. Because but... uh, remember the AJ Million Dollar Tower? Even yeah. if you did turn it off. Yeah. But that was competitive. I don't know. Who knows? So... The, who cares? <laughs> so the problem is, like, you'll be paired up against somebody who has more counters yeah. than you, and like on one side that makes sense, on the other it's stupid. Yeah. And so they'll counter, you'll counter, they'll counter, you'll counter, and now you're out. So yeah. if they counter again, you're screwed until you until it regenerates. And, and there's not yeah. even a reliable way to like regain them. It doesn't seem like yeah. no button mashing technique. Or yeah. Blah, 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 blah. Or, uh, like, even if you put in, like, a system where, like, you you have to press and hold two uh, triggers button, yeah. and it'll just ca- gradually reload, like the old stamina system. You're right, yeah. That would at least make make it feel better uh, when you get the little plus sign or the minus sign. When you're on the minus sign, I think if you button mash, it makes it go down faster, but I could be hallucinating. Okay. Um, but it's the fact that that then even further will block you out from doing yeah. counters. So it, it, it seems to damp, put a, a damp towel over some of the gameplay for me. Um, all in all, uh, stuff seems fine. Uh, there could absolutely be more stuff in the creative modes. Um, I wanted to check earlier today, and I I'd never got around to it, with creative video. Because mm-hmm. I tinkered with that a little bit on 2K19, make, like making your own yeah. entrance videos for people. And I wanted to see if they'd updated the the stock library at all in this one. I didn't look, so I, okay. I, I don't know. Um, Are there any particular wrestlers that you like playing with? Like, I've heard Matt Riddle's moveset is pretty cool, even though I don't really like Matt Riddle. Uh, I really play Have you played with anyone where it's like, yeah, like that guy's moveset is really cool, actually? Um, Not really. I, okay. I haven't played too much exhibition mode. I've done mostly my created superstar and then the, the my career. Yeah. And my guy, I think I... Who did I copy? I think I copied... It might have been Dolph. <laughs> I think I copied Dolph's core set, and then I adjust his fin- the finishers because it's faster. Okay. Um, I did play as the Fiend once I unlocked him. Okay. And he plays like the Fiend. Like, if that, if that makes sense. <laughs> it's actually... You know, I actually didn't want to touch on this. You know, I was thinking about it, I'm like... They have the fiend down like the whole nine yards. Like I've seen some of the DLC moves where yeah. like some. I think there's a, actually a thing where if someone runs at the fiend and you counter, it does that thing where he locks your arm like this, and he kind of like remember how he did it to Finn yeah. Balor at SummerSlam, and like he'll just throw you down. So I'm like, they got the fiend pretty well. What boggles my mind is you're able to get the fiend when he came out at SummerSlam just two months before release. Yet all these other superstars are completely outdated. Yeah. Like I was thinking about it, I'm like a good example is Io Shirai. Io Shirai has been healed for a good minute. Yeah. So it's not like she just turned heel. She's been healed for a good minute, but yet in the game she has her baby face look, her baby face entrance, and it's like, huh? How yeah. does and Io turned way before the Fiend debuted in WWE. So I don't know if that's accurate. No. I don't. I don't think you're quite right, but I. Th- I think she went heel long enough ago, where they could have at least tried to integrate it, yeah. or maybe they will integrate it. I'm not holding my breath on will. Okay. But that's another thing we'll get into in the list yeah. as to what I think they could be doing. But. So, any final thoughts or? Um, I would say overall gameplay from what I've done so far, I give it like a B. Okay. It's not bad. It kept some of the some of the the mediocrity from the last one, um, and it hasn't changed a whole lot. But I mean, it's it's simple enough. Uh, you've got decent stuff. Like I said, the like the fiend plays like the fiend. You feel like you feel like Bray Wyatt as the fiend when you're playing because he does the sp- the his when you attack them with the hold, the press and hold strike while they're laying on the ground. He does the little like falling headbutt thing, 
and the pacing on it is perfect. Like, it feels like him when he does the, the uh, knockdown where he does the two, like, arms and he just yeah. slams you to the ground. Perfect. Um, and I like that. So his main finishers are both mandible claws. Right. And the one is the submission and the other is just actually a pin. pin. Yeah. And I like that because yeah. I kept using that one. Um, cause variety. Like you have variety. Exactly. Yeah. And then the Sister Abigails. But um, Are those his signatures? Uh, those are his signatures. Okay. So he does the signatures and then he does the mandible claws. Okay. Makes sense. Um, so, yeah, I'll give it a B. Could there be improvement? Yes. Could it be worse? Yes. It's not quite that good. <laughs> the way you paused after you said that. So, there you go. That's that's my review of 2K20. And you haven't touched online. I have not touched online. So, okay. <laughs> if I did, it would it could probably drop to like a C. Wow. We'll see, though. No pun intended. Did you feel like you got your money's worth? Um... So far. So far. Okay. Um, Because like I said, it's not like I had to fight super hard to get the characters that I was supposed to be getting as part of the bump in the night, knowing that it'll probably be easy to get the characters from the other three packs. Um, The story being enjoyable enough in my career. There's some weird stuff going on in there, but it works. Um, It has the same kind of feel as last year's stuff with like the Matt Hardy at times, which was... Again, kitschy and weird, but it's part of the fun. Yeah. So, yeah, so far. Plus, I got the, the cards for Supercard. So. <laughs> of course. Of so, course. for somebody who plays Supercard, you also go, well, I've got those, and then I've got the game. and blah, blah. So, yeah. If I had pay- if I had paid the $130 for the SmackDown one, or however much it was, probably not. I probably okay. would not feel like I got my money's worth. Okay. Well, that's fair, and I'm glad that you have your opinion, because I know a lot of people just want to jump on the bandwagon of, oh, everyone says that it sucks, so I'm going to say that it sucks as well, you know? So if yeah. you've had a decent experience, then okay, you know, more power to you, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I haven't hung the game up yet, which means it's doing something right as far as yeah. game as a video game goes, but would I go what would I gush about it as much as I gush about The Last of Us or The Legend <laughs> of Dragoon or some of my favorite games of all time? No. Well, um, like okay. honestly, two K nineteen is probably better than better. twenty. Okay. But yeah, <laughs> shall we? Shall we move on to yes. the list? Uh, he's not talking about AEW. Um, so um, I are they doing that over an AEW? The no, list? no. But it's just <laughs> when you said like you're um, re- referencing Chris Jericho, so I just you know I was like, is he still doing that shit? Um. So, uh, I kind of came up with the idea a few days ago of just 10 things, you know, that we can each compile and just stuff that we can read off of. And uh, what we've, 10 things essentially that we feel like will make WWE either 2K20 or 2K21 uh, feel like a better wrestling game. So, please join us for our new segment 10 Things I Hate About You. All right, so go ahead and kick it off. You want me to do, shop. okay, you want to do, I do one, you do one? Yeah, that's Okay. Fine. Um, so uh, here we go. Uh, first thing that with, I... With ten things each, we'll, we'll have to kind of be brief, though, with our... Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, first thing that I wrote here is bring back creative stories. Such a mode allowed for additional hours of gameplay, allowed for creativity. Even less enthusiastic gamers might get the urge to play the game for this mode. Um, I know you and I talked about always being creative. Yeah. Um, and just having something where our minds could just experiment with. This was one of those modes where I easily spent hours just picking characters and branching storylines and so-and-so will say this and so-and-so will say that. Um, I just feel like even if you don't get the urge to play an ex- exhibition match, you'll get the urge to go into the into creative story and just create and, a story. And become a writer for WWE. Exactly. Something that you would want to see in the product. Yeah. So... Uh, yeah, I guess like kind of like it's it was kind of like a, a thing of its own, kind of like the career mode where it's like you just you go into this mode and you spend hours on it and then you yeah. kind of come out and you go back to exhibition. So, yeah. I I think having this in in, in in maybe if it's patched into 2K20, which I don't think it will be, or bringing it back in 2K21, excellent feature to have. Yeah. 
So that's me for my number one. So, so my for uh, some of mine are going to be super brief things, and some are going to be a little more involved. Mm-hmm. This one is Dylan. just glitchy clothing. As much as I like the ghost belt that I just put on my guy, <laughs> um, that needs to be fixed. Like the clothing needs to not bleed through, behave strangely. Um, can I maybe forgive it if they're going through the ropes and it kind of catches on the rope a little bit? I mean, that's a natural physics thing, but like if it gets like caught on it, like it just got handcuffed to the rope, that's weird. If it's leaving a ghost trail like this belt does, that's weird. Is it one of those things that I, like I sent you the video because I was like, what a stupid glitch. Because it's funny. It's funny to see, but you don't want that to be a continuous thing. Yeah. Um... So that's it. That's all on that one. Just okay. fi- fixing glitchy clothing specifically on this one. Okay. Moving on to my number two. Reinstate the ability to put in custom tracks. Um, they had this last time in 2K15, I want to say. And it was just one of those things where if you got a superstar, gave them like one of their um, attires from back in the day, you can also incorporate the theme song that they had back yeah. at that time. Yeah, I just thought this was a really neat touch. Um, back in the day that it like they, there's a way to do it like with Spotify and all those apps on the PS4 you'll be you can do that no problem so yeah. that's my number two uh, so my number two is to resolve specific the specific requirements issue um, so what do you mean by that specifically uh, I don't know if you read about this one but there's one match in my career where you fight Velveteen Dream. Okay. And one of the, the the goals, one of the things you have to do to win the match, or to fulfill the match, is you have to perform the Purple Rainmaker elbow. Okay. Now, I watched another video that talked about this because I got to the, I was playing the match and I got to the point where it, w- like it wasn't happening and I'm like, what the hell is going on? Is this not like structured in? No, it's not. So... You have to have either unlocked Move Thief already by the time you get to this match, or you have to do what I did, which the guy recommended, and that's turn one of your moves into the Purple Rainmaker to do it. It should be, you shouldn't have to make those changes, and you shouldn't have to acquire a specific thing with zero warning in order to... Right, because that's kind of blocking you. Yeah. Because if you didn't unlock Move Thief and you couldn't fulfill the thing by changing your move to Purple Rainmaker, you're, you're stuck. stuck. So that needs to be resolved. Like that should be a thing where it automatically registers that you have Move Thief in that situation. Yeah. Or the the thing like with the, the handicap match. It should automatically register, oh, this guy's going to be overwhelmed by reversals. Maybe the reversals shouldn't be there. Or maybe yeah. the weight class thing should be off. Something like that yeah. to make it actually fair. Yeah. Um, or a or a tag handicap match where one guy is outside and one guy's in the ring at yeah. the whole time. Um, but yeah, that that's all that one is is just making making it so that specific requirements are fulfillable whether or not you've met some tertiary yeah. condition. Yeah, because condition. because it's not it's not fair. It's not fair to people. It, if you don't know if you if you don't have a phone or a computer but you have a PlayStation. <laughs> and you can't go online to look up how to complete this mission, and you haven't unlocked Move Thief, and you haven't just happened to set your finisher to the to the Purple Rain elbow, um, you're gonna you're gonna be stuck on that thing forever. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, I can attest that as well. I feel like some of these objectives that they put is like awfully specific, and it's like you could have done. You could have done the match without having that objective in yeah. there. So, um, uh, my third is um, excluded restrictions, such as in six-man matches, comebacks are not allowed, or stealing finishers needs to be an ability, or waiting for health meter to be in a certain place to hit finishers. Um, Which I'm, sounds like that's actually in line with what I just said, but go on. Um, honestly, like I hate to harp on this again, but... 2K14 was so perfect when it came to stuff like this because it was almost after 2K14 where a lot of the stuff that you already had for granted, it was now, oh, it has to be an ability. Oh, you have to unlock it. Oh, you have to be in this type of health to do that. And it's like, 
but I was able to do it back in the day without any restrictions. Why can't I do that? Dan? Why? Why can't I just run free in the video game I paid you assholes for? <laughs> um, but no, you said, like, in four, did 14 not have the abilities thing in the game yet? Was it after that? I think they had abilities, but it was a lot more lean. Like, comebacks were an ability. Well, like, I know, Resilience was an ability, but it wasn't like... Um, well, move, like, like, Move, move Thief, thief was used to, free. used to be a thing back in the day where you... Everyone The, the had only it. thing you had to do was have two finishers stored and do the thing. Yeah. Or something. In Press an additional button and you would have steal the other guy's finisher. Exactly. And now it's like, oh, no, you have to have that ability. Yeah. And so that's why, why playing through the Velveteen match the first time, I was like, oh, well, I should probably just have to get into his condition and hit the button. I yeah. got up on the rope and hit the finisher button and nothing happened. I went, all right. So at least I was smart enough to go, there's probably an issue with this. Let's go online. And I found it. Yeah. But otherwise people will be stuck in that match forever. Going, yeah. Why, why can't I do it? Um, yeah. Another one that I mentioned was, um, comebacks. Apparently if you have match of six men or more comebacks for whatever reason are not allowed. They are just, oh, so even if that set is one of your things, now you just have a dead, uh, yeah. a dead, what the hell are those called? Paybacks. Yeah. That's, like, that's you don't, dumb. you can't use it for whatever reason. But the one that just gets to me the most is the fact that my meter needs to be in a certain place for me to hit a finisher. Now, look, I get it. Oh, you're talking the, the whole stamina bar. Yeah, this one. I get it. In real life, you know, it's like, oh, well, if you don't have any energy, you have to regain some energy to hit a finisher. Okay, but it's a game. It's not like, it's not real fighters. It's just pixels moving around. Let's, it's like you said at one time, don't make everything in the game a mini game. Yeah. So that's it. That that that's that's my question. Well, and I've run into that a handful of times where like I I'm not staring at the meter at the bottom. Yeah. And I I'm just beating the hell out of the guy and I go and I pick I stand them up in front of me and I'm like, "Ha!" Huh, and nothing happens <laughs> because my bar is still down here, yeah. which then gives them a second to continue to recover and then uh, on occasion they've gotten to hit me before I get yeah. to do it. Yeah. And so then I'm like and odds are they also have more more reversals than me at this point. Yeah. So now it's it's a fight against it's an uphill battle. So out I of curiosity, it. do you ever have those moments? Because sometimes I look for like those very cinematic moments in a match where, let's say, if you reverse somebody's finisher and then you try to hit a finisher of your own, it's like it becomes a great sequence. But the second when you come to hit your finisher, oh, your bar is too low. You're not able. So it kind of yeah. it, it kills that momentum. Yeah. So I did have a really a really good one. I don't remember what the match was. This but is two K twenty. Yeah. Okay. But it was playing as the the female my career character, and I did something. I think it was a match against Rusev and Lana. Okay. And I. Uh, oh yeah, that's that's what it was. So I couldn't figure out how to because the in the mix match challenge matches, I don't think you're allowed to hit the other person. Right. Or the person of the opposite gender. I don't yes. think, like, when they're off on the apron, I don't think you can do, like, the shoulder block. Right, 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 right. So, what I figured out I had to do was I had the male, because they have you, your two characters versus Rusev and Lana. I had my male character um, throw Rusev out of the ring, tag out, the, and Lana got in. There was an exchange with those two. Lana reversed. I reversed. Lana reversed. Or, uh, or no. I reversed, Lana reversed, I reversed, hit her with my super kick, and I won the match. And it was beautiful. Yeah, yeah. That's the only time I've had something that fluid go right. on in that game, though. But, but you can imagine, if your momentum was low, you would not be able to... And it kind of like, it's like you get into the game, but then when you can hit it, you kind of get pulled out like... Oh, so we're here again. Great, yeah. <laughs> but no, yeah, that's 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 mine. Uh, number four for me, or number three, I guess... Is all erratic hair and clothing behavior, which I I I think I'm gonna just skip that because I already kind of talked about that. Um, because what was one of the other things you mentioned? Because I was gonna bring one up. Of the restrictions. Uh, let me see your let me see your sheet real quick because one of your things triggered triggered a thought. Uh oh yeah, this is what I didn't write this down, but I think I thought of it earlier. Okay. Is they need to. Uh, either patch the ability... This is something we've talked about before. Either patch the ability to modify um, existing superstars to make them consistent with what they look like now. No. 
Or what is even what would be even better is if, as superstars d- display new attire or new behaviors or new hairstyles, they have a team that creates these and patches them into the into the game. It's not that hard. I mean, I'm not a game developer, but. Logistically, I can't imagine that that's any harder than putting in a patch for the new content. Or patch and create a championship. Yeah, and they've done it before. They've done it before where they add something in after the fact. Yeah. They go, oh, and this character should have been in the game, and here you go. Or, oh, and we just put in 100 new shirts. Yeah. Uh, that's all you need. Yo Shirai. Yes. Patch in her heel attire. I mean, you can even do it as, like, I'll, t- I'll, t- I'll talk about this heavily later, but, like, you select Io Shirai, it's her current, but she has a second attire. Yeah. Like, Io Shirai NXT 19 gear. And it's, like, it's her, yeah. it's her heel attire. Well, her... and, and so, like, I, I unlocked a alternate attire for Miz as part of my career. My career. And so now if I go to Miz, uh, it's that'll, there. that'll be there. Yeah. But, just yeah, just patch in these alter- alternate attires because I know, <laughs> well, that's not the same thing. I was looking at all the available superstars that are going to be there. There's like four Becky Lynch's because it's from the showcase. And so it's like <sighs> Becky before the actual orange hair and then three different Becky attires. And I know you're going to talk about this also. But God yeah, just help me. just like because Bailey too. Like I mentioned with when I was yeah. playing 2019 the other day. I just wanted to put the short hair on her. Dan. Why can't I change her haircut? It can't, it, honestly, it can't eat up that many resources. It can't. And you put in so much, the, you put in so much effort. You put in Ribby. Who doesn't even have a constructual face or body, yet you put him in the game. Yeah. But so you've got, you put in so much effort to certain things, like Bump in the Night. You went out of your way to make each facet of this thing its own its own gameplay yeah which i i don't have a problem with i appreciate it it's it's very arch, archaic not archaic archaic because it's it it makes you kind of think of going to the arcade or pe- your local pizza hut and there's a street fighter game in the corner and you go and you play that and you work your way up the tower yeah. it has a feeling of that yeah um but you should like it's it's one of those small things that like I just want my Bailey to have the short hair consistent yeah. with her current style. I just want heel Io Shirai. I just want Asuka with the green face paint. I just like it's it's little things that can't be that hard to integrate into the game. It's just like adding another shirt, and I know they've done it before. Well, I know you and I kind of spitballed this idea of maybe you can charge a dollar. You know, for like so and so's new attire comes complete with new theme song, like new hairstyle, new facial hair, new clothes, new gear, and just throw it out there. You yeah. could, yeah, I mean, you could do that too instead of yeah, doing. Yeah, if it's like a full pack thing, I wouldn't necessarily have a problem with throwing a dollar at a specific, specific character. So that's fine. For a second, I thought you were gonna say, oh, you can throw a dollar to get their new attire. I'm like, that. <laughs> I'm not giving them a dollar for for a new a new pair of pants. Um, but no, if it's like a, a full out new attire, the, the updated thing, yeah. music, um, the motions, updated move set, taunts, that sort of thing. If it's a whole thing, then, Pack. then maybe yeah. yeah. Um, did you read last or did I read last? Um, I did because it was the one where I went off. I went off script. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this is a big one, um, and I've talked about this for a long time. During matches, implement wear and tear on the player. As a match progresses, wrist tape comes off, blood smearing across knuckles, head, chest, and mat. Elbow slash knee pads slide off. TLC destruction remains in the arena. Hair gets fuzzy or messed up. Blood gets and stays in the hair. This could be a mode that you turn off because I know a lot of people, when they assign their character, they want the elbow pads and everything to stay intact. Yeah. But I just think that this would really help, like, I believe it was SmackDown versus Raw 2010. They did two things that actually really um, like helped with this. If you chopped someone in the chest, their chest would get bruised. It yeah. would get red. And then if you um, busted them open, the blood would rub off on your knuckles, yeah. on your chest. On the mat. Yes. 
Um, and then they would do the weathering of the face paint last year. Even, yes, I think where like you'd put it, you'd wrestle Demon King and but you would have to wrestle about. for a while. It wasn't yeah. like you know. Um, but like, I, I, like sometimes when I see like a, a victory scene and you see Triple H and he looks normal, he looks great. And it's like, no, oh, he doesn't like, look worn down. Yeah. And I think that's a really big problem. It's like, they always talk about, we want to give you the real experience. Well, if you implement stuff like this, and again, I know a lot of people are like, well, I don't want my guy's stuff coming off. Let it be a mode where you could just, just turn it off and everything will stay intact. Now, in addition to this, something I think could be kind of fun is if they they integrated a button control while that mode is turned on where like you can rip your opponent's clothing because yes. you'll see sometimes like Braun will pick up a small person right. by the shirt and like rip that off yeah. and chuck them if they had it to where it was like you press um so, like like circle and square at the same time since that button combination is not being used right now and I'm talking PlayStation if you're an yeah. Xbox gamer I don't remember what the things are on those yeah. controllers A uh, X and B maybe but, yeah, you just, like, hit two two stray buttons that are not set up as a yes. combo, and then you grab your person. It's basically a grapple, but you grab them and, like, rip their shirt off, yeah. and now the per Like, there's a model underneath the character. Yeah. So you which, is shocking, which is shocking, because if you think about it, I saw a video where apparently Eric Rowan's is, like, new tattoo is there, even though he's wearing a shirt. So it's like, they go the extra mile. They, they give you all that. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't mind a feature where, like, if you're wearing a wrist tape, you take it and you choke your opponent with it because that's what a lot of people do, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I just... Call, call it uh, ruthless aggression mode or something. Something, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but I think that implementing this, it's like, it kind of gives you that feeling like you've just been through a grueling match. Yeah. Or sometimes where the spray tan wears off on the wrist tape and it goes from white to, a, like, a beige color yeah. where it's blended in with the superstar skin. It's like... Everybody's sweaty in this game. That's actually a neat feature because yeah. I've noticed in matches where you play like for... In real life, if you play for like 15 minutes, like your superstar is sweaty. And 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 it'll do it the other way too because there's a six-man match in my career and I didn't tag my partners in. So I just be, I just beat the other team on my own and my, my character is just drenched. And I think it was uh, Rhonda and Bianca Belair are just standing there next to me looking cool as a cucumber. <laughs> and you're like, you guys didn't do shit. Well, that's realistic. And, it's it's and consistent. It's, and, I, and I liked it. Um, but yeah, to, to, your, to your point, if we're going to go to that point to where now you can see varying levels of sweatiness, yeah. we could also see varying levels of uh, ke Kempness. Yeah. So, no, I, I dig it. Yeah, that's me. Uh, which one are we on? Five? Four? I guess. I... This is not going very fast. Um, So, some AI superstars seem to have superpowers. Now, what I'm referring to is, and this was one of the reasons my Money in the Bank ladder match went as long as it did. It seemed like Zelina Vega, who's in the match, couldn't shove the ladder over for shit. <laughs> And if I tried to shove the ladder over, it's the bu the s bu button mash of the circle thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it would take forever. Just like if you're trying to not be dragged toward the ropes, you're like... Yeah. And you still get taken to the ropes. There's no, no way to stop it. Um, but Bianca Belair would touch the thing, and you would see the, the meter go... Yeah. And she'd shove the thing over, and you're like, I literally just got up here. I just got up here, you just touched the ladder, and I'm already on the mat. This doesn't make any sense. So it needs to, that things like that need to be tempered. Like you can't have one superstar in the match just blitz through the the thing. Yeah. But then in real life, I can't do it. Like I can't grab the ladder and immediately shove it over. Right. Yeah. So it needs to be consistent with what a person would do. Right. Because that's very indicative of a computer processing it as opposed yeah. to a person doing right. it. Any other examples of uh, superstars having, like, superpowers um, like that? I'll just go on record of saying this, and maybe this yeah, falls into to the, to the same thing. Sometimes when you hit, like, six or seven finishers, and they still kick out, yeah. I'm like, okay, like, what's what's going on right yeah. now? Well, I mean, like, we we did that one match online, and I kicked <laughs> out, like, seven times against you. So Dan! I, uh, what? <laughs> oh. It didn't cue me up for the why. I was gonna why say, did, you why did I kick out so many times? Let me tell you. 
because I, I had that hunger. I didn't want to lose. I wasn't willing to give up. And you still lost. And I still lost. Uh, but what's so but when funny, I face you again at WrestleMania, it's going to be a different story. Brother. Um, but what's so funny is other times when you're playing as the AI, you hit a signature and they're gone. One, two, three, pinfall. Yeah. So, like, there's no consistency there, you know? I don't know. I think know. that's also one of the slight issues with that mini game, the kickout mini game. Yeah. Is, I, I, like, I, for one, I despise the fact that it grays out the first one all anytime you get hit with a signature right. or a finisher because then you're automatically losing a chance. You're fatigued. Yeah, like it's because it's it's fine if the 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 thing the the gauge keeps getting smaller. Yeah, that's fine. I don't have a problem with that. But I should have three attempts to yeah. kick out of right. of, a, of a pinfall anytime. Yes, and I've had matches before where because it it's the, and there's no consistency on that either. Where the one where it's grayed out because I feel like it's like you click and and it'll come back, but I feel like it's time oriented. Yeah. So it's an amount of time that you have no idea on, and then the meter goes back, and it starts going for the second one. Yeah. And if you miss that, you have one shot left. Yeah. And then if you miss that, it's over. You're right. And it, and I've had that happen with exhibition matches where I just happened to, to, to lose. I've had it happen against Randy Orton in the showcase on 19. Yeah. That's why I've never finished it, is because he'll luck into an RKO on me, and it'll gray me out, and then I miss the two things, and I go, Jesus Christ, I just spent 15 minutes doing this again. <laughs> And it's frustrating. So, yeah. Again, eliminated restrictions. Yeah. Uh, so number five on your list. We probably uh, should have done five and five. Again, I think we you kind of uh, touched on this. Additional options for create a superstar, for example, allow for a bandana to go on or behind the ear, or shirts tucked in or out. Which Chain. they used to do. They used to do and, and shut your mouth. Yeah. That used to be an option. Either tuck in the shirt or have it tucked out. So I guess it wasn't technically they used to do it. It was Ukes. Yeah, and TH... THQ, yeah. Yeah, yeah, THQ. Um, change hair, facial hair options, which you touched on. P.S. Get rid of restrictions. Again, I'm going to keep on saying that. Um, yeah, like, there are times where, like, even in 19, I would put a bandana on someone, and it looks so weird when it's going on the ear as opposed to having it behind the ear. Yeah. Um, or it's like you want to, like, you find the perfect shirt. But, oh, guess what? It's tucked in. It's like, no, I need it to be tucked out. Like, if I was trying to create a mankind. Yeah. No, have it tucked out. Oh, no, there's no options for that. Yeah. So, um, I talked about it before. Um, have the ability to change hair and facial hair. It's like, we talked about Bailey. Or uh, who's someone who consistently has different facial hair? Like Rusev. Rusev, yeah. this guy has had like maybe six or seven different facial hair hairstyles in yeah. the last year and a half. Or Bobby Roode, if Bob you wanted to put the actual like full yeah. beard back on him. But he's, Don't you he's mean got the mustache. Robert Roode? No, I'm talking about Bobby Roode when he had the oh. when he had the the facial hair. Yeah, but um, <laughs> but yeah, like or even someone like the Undertaker has had many different hairstyles. Yeah. What if I want to have the Undertaker of WrestleMania 25 or and he's you got know the mohawk? Yeah, so I mean, uh, allow like this is something that's like again, I'm not a da game developer, but I know you can patch this in. Like if we have the ability to dye hair, to apparently you can't change face paint. I don't know. I haven't played with that. Apparently on, that's on a who? thing on just anyone who has face paint. You cannot change the color anymore. That's weird. And they took out current sting, by the way. Did they? Yep. Weird. I didn't notice. So it seems like not only are they not taking a step forward, but they're actually taking a step back. Well, I mean, uh, again, on one hand, you you can all, you can sympathize a little bit, but still, you guys are you guys make games. You should find you should be able to find a way yeah. to do stuff. Um, the part that just kills it is when you're able to do something in the previous game. And then suddenly it's gone. Yes. Um, so go, I'll just touch on this briefly again because I'm pretty sure I've, I've thrown this horse off a cliff. Um, you throw horses off cliffs? Well, I beat, I beat them. And then at a certain point, you got to do something with the body. He's got a point. Uh, so the countering system needs an overhaul. And the, the reason is because I don't have a problem with there being limitations of some sort um, or specific conditions like if there was again a button combination you could do that <coughs> that would then make the counter meter start to fill back up so like if you're standing at, standing in the ring you've just chucked, their, chucked your opponent yeah. out to the outside and you press a button and then your counter meter starts to actively fill back yeah. up 
not lightning speed, but you yeah. Know. But it's there. It's faster than the the static re, yeah. re, re, re um, juvenation. Yeah. But um, to be limited to f- <sighs> until you. So I have I I pretty much uncovered the entire char- my character my career tree. I haven't selected everything, but I've expanded to where I can pretty much see every hexagon in the thing. Okay. And I have my female character up to four count four counters now, and I think the male might also be at four now. Okay. But you start with two. But you're still put up against people who have four. Four. And you're like, yeah. dude, come on. Because then you, you exhaust, especially with the frequency with which they counter, because I think I built, did I build that into this too? Yeah, uneven frequency of counters. So the AI, I'm on normal mode. I'm not even on uh, legend hard or, hard, or legend. Yeah. And it's just I, I have to do the kick them while they're on the ground to bait them to tactic, reverse, which is yeah. not realistic. Which kind of fuck, fucks up the 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 pacing. It takes you out of the game essentially. Yeah, where I'm I'm trying to grapple you, and then I have to go. Okay, well now he's got now he has two counters again. I've got to kick him for a while. Yeah. Um, and it just kind of it just kind of kills it because then instead what I could do is I could get one good shot in, press the buttons, refill my counter, now we're even, and then I go back into fighting. Yeah. It, I think that would just help the that overall pacing of the right. of the of the yes. gameplay. That's all. <laughs> um let's see, where are we? And at this at this midway point, if you guys wanna chime in, obviously, you got the comments below. Give us your list of ten, or if you don't want to make a list of ten, list of five, list of three, whatever. Come and play. Play with Neki. <laughs> She's so cute. Um, <laughs> uh, ironically, you know, you're just talking about the counters and reversing. I This sort of semis kind of ties in. Allow for players to set the pace of a match to either slow, moderate, or fast. Yeah. Um, I get it. Some people might think to themselves, you know what? I don't want everybody going at lightning speed. I, I, I want it to, to, be, to get slowed down. Fine. And then you have other people, you know what, I like the old, you know, games better where the pacing was faster. Fine. Have an option where you can set it to either slow, moderate, or fast. Yeah. This gets limited to, let's say, if you want a fast match, nobody goes down to a knee. Nobody's got to wait for a finisher thing to be, for the energy thing to be um, in a certain place for you to hit a finisher. Yeah. If you do want those, have a moderate match. Have a slow match where everything is more realistic. Yes. Yeah. But give the player that option. I saw a couple of clips where it seems like for 2K19 it was good, and now in 2K20 they kind of went back to slowing some things down. Where like the picking up your opponent, where you get him to one knee. Sometimes yeah, there's, like, there's like three stages before they're back on their feet. Yeah, yeah. So it's like in 2K19 they like the pacing went to a good place. In 2K20 it doesn't look horrible, but it seems like they kind of went back to slowing it down just a little bit. It's like, dude, don't slow it down. Yeah, leave it to where it was before. Um, yeah, that's just, that's me. All right, well, my number six, which is something you've kind of talked about before, I put more attention to core game and physics. Now, my reference to this was connected to Bump in the Night, and I don't remember what my, uh, what my, th- oh, that's what it was. It was the fact that, it, it was the fact that they put so much energy or so much focus on turning Bump in the Night into its own and see, sub-game. Yeah. While the main game Suffered. saw these steps back, yeah. saw these sufferings, uh, th- these drop-offs of features, or these glitches. You yeah. put so much effort into making this downloadable content its own gameplay experience that we've got ghost <laughs> ghost belts yeah. that are chasing us around the ring. So, that's all. That's all on that one. I mean, uh, to touch on that for a second, on the last episode I said if I was, you know, chairman of 2K, I'd be like... For 2K21, if if we can be afforded to make a 2K21, we're stripping away career mode. We're stripping away showcase. Let's focus on core gameplay. Make that the best you can make it, and then we will expand our horizons to a career mode, to a showcase mode, to a you know whatever. Yeah. So I don't know how much how much while, while you pre- prepare for your next one, yeah. I don't know how much time they they actively are developing these wrestling games. I don't know. Um, I don't know if they have... It seems like it's 10 months. 
does it do you do you think that they actually dedicate ten months to it? Because I feel like in ten months at a game company, you should be able to do a little better than what they did with this one. Can I say something? And again, I I have like, beat. And granted, it's taking three months for Last of Us to fine tune their last things. So maybe yeah. I, maybe I just don't have any scope. Go on. Um, I've beat this dead horse. I've revived it, and I'm beating it again. Take what you had in 2K14, literally copy and paste it in, and then just make refinements. Um, let's see. Fig okay, this is a big one. For a guy, you know me, Dan, I, like half my time in uh, wrestling games I spent in um, Create uh, Superstar or like Create Threads. Yeah. Um, one of my biggest problems... Fix the bug of superstars not taking off props during entrances. For example, Cena taking off his his hat, Asuka taking off the mask, Charlotte taking off the rope. If you play them with their original attires, this is not a problem. It, you know, the game, you know, it understands that Cena's got to take off his hat. However, the second one I go, you know what? I want to give Cena his look from 2012 and I give him his green attire. He does his entrance, but he does oh, not take off the about. cap. Or Asuka, I want to give her her mask from a year ago. So I'll go out and substitute that in and she'll do the motion, but the mask still stays but it's on. Now, it, it's, it's like it's coded to where the original one is part of the character. Yeah. And that when they do the thing, it's coded in to throw it. Yes. But if you adjust the part, then it's part that's now no longer part of yeah. the activity. That's part of the clothing. Yeah. Now, forgive me for beating this dead horse again, but in 2K14, they would allow for you to change the um, colors of the entrance attire. And every time it would take it off you yeah. would you wouldn't be able to change it to a different hat but you can change the color so you could get into a ballpark and then cena would always take his hat off and it's the same thing with like hooded yes hooded uh sweatshirts because you you have like Co cody rhodes's entrance in there where he grabs the hood and he throws the hood back and yeah. stands up and i i played my character with that because i put him in a hoodie one time and he goes, he grabs it, and when he stands up, it's still on, and you're like, what the hell did you just do that? Or AJ Styles. Yeah. If you give him a different one, he'll do the thing, and he'll flap his hands, but the, his hood is still on. Yeah. Yeah, that's just it. Please fix that ASAP. It pisses me off. Go ahead, Dan. So, number seven on my list is something that I, I said before the game came out. I was like, I'll have to see. I'll have to see how this goes. And it doesn't seem to be a chronic problem, but it's an isolated problem, and that's the hit detection. Yeah, yeah. They need to fix the hit dete detection specifically toward grounded opponents, because or the targeting system. Some it's one of, it's one of the two, if not both, because I'll be standing right next to the person, and I will hit square to stomp them, and I'll miss by this much, yeah. and I'll do it again, and I will miss by that much, and I'm like, I've just tried to kick you four times, and I missed every single time. Um, so I don't know if it's a mixture, if it's a mixture, but it also happens with weapons. Yeah. Because when I was doing the bump in the night thing, there's a, a weird, like, broom yeah, weapon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I would pick that up, and I would swing it down, and I would just hit the ground five times. And I'm like, okay, I guess I'm not going to hit you with the <laughs> with the haunted broom. But I've heard that even running finishers is kind of a gnarly because you'll run at them, and, you know, like, your superstar somehow misses. And, like, yeah. they'll, they'll do, like, a, a, a general move as opposed to the, the running finishing move. Yeah, and I, I I think there is st there is some in there. I I've encountered it, but the bigger problem for me has been the, a aiming at people who are on the ground. Yeah, but it does happen when you're running towards somebody and you just wildly miss and or hit the something air. Like, yeah, yeah. I accidentally took out the referee in one of my matches <laughs> because uh, I was actually able to with with my female character attack Rusev. <laughs> um, but I also knocked out the referee at the same time, so it might have um, just that might have been why I yeah. registered. But that's it. Hit detection targeting needs to be fine tuned so that they actually sync Connect, up. Connect, yes. Um, I I said this just five minutes ago. Scrap showcase and career mode instead of uh, reinstate season mode where upgrading a superstar is non-existent. Allow for superstar to participate in various storylines and allow for branching. Wouldn't mind text only instead of voice acting by real superstars. I just feel like when it came to your shut your mouth and your here comes the pains, I spent a lot more hours on that than I have since any other game since then. Yeah. Now I, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna leapfrog off yours and skip to my number nine because it ties into the voice okay. acting thing you just said. So, 
what, what was the first part of what you said? Um, scrap showcase and career mode instead of reinstate season mode where upgrading a superstar is non-existent. Okay, so first of all, um, if I'm if you make me make a character and upgrade the character in my in my career mode, I should be able to use them in exhibition mode. And the fact that we've now gone at least two years since those are the most recent ones I've played, where they make me make a character and then I can't use them anywhere except the story, nonsense, unacceptable. Fix it. But doesn't two K twenty allow that? I don't think so. I don't think I have really? access to either of my people. I, I'll, I'll double check. Yeah, I don't, double I don't check. think it's given me permission to uh, use them outside of my career. Maybe because you're not done with it yet? Maybe. Oh. I thought the same thing with it last year, though, and even when I when I I think I finished my career. I think I finished my career in 2019. Maybe not. Um, but the other side of it is consistency of arcade versus cinematic versus... Um, uh, what the hell did I say? Anyway, I'll just explain. So, in the Bump in the Night pack, you have the thing where they, they like, throw the per, like, a picture, like, a 2D image of the character, and they say a thing. And then the other character comes out, and they say a thing. Yeah. And it's that, like, text-based arcade yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. And that's fine. Like, that's fine. And I, I, one of the core things I love about these games is the, like, cinematic. They're not, like, as cinematic as some other games, but the cinematic cutscenes where, like, you're in the back and everybody's talking and yeah. you get into the fist fight, which leads to the thing. That's fine. But the thing in the hallway that we were talking about where the mouth doesn't move, I would rather that you just do the broom, 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 character yeah. popping in yeah. 2D thing yeah. than have Carmella or Charlotte look at me and go... Yeah. And their mouth doesn't right. say the words, yeah. but you hear them. Be consistent, though. Like, I would rather you just do the arcade thing for the, for the situations where that makes sense, and then for the cinematic things, do cinematic. Yeah. Um, I don't need them to talk if their mouth isn't going to move. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. You know, like I said, those old school games where there was no real life you know, voices talking. Yeah. I just felt like you were able to do a lot more with it. Um, yeah, and maybe scheduling all these superstars to come in and do real-life recordings is a problem like we saw last year for John Cena, where it was John Cena, but that was not his yeah, voice. Yeah, just some guy. Um, so, because I crossed another one off my list, you can go again. Okay, um, where was I? Uh, get rid of duplicate superstar slots. Yep, we heard this one coming. Um, instead have one superstar with alternate attires. Perfect example. Again, I'm beating this dead horse, reviving it, but I'm going to beat it again. WWE 2K14. Hulk Hogan had various attires, which included entrances and winning motions. Allow for full customization in each attire, meaning attire, entrance, and victory. Yeah. Um, they did this in 2K14 to perfection. You would have the big show of 2004 would come out to that Titantron, to that motion, to that entrance yeah. music. Then you would go to the big show of, let's say, a 2012 or 2013. You would come out to that entrance, to that song, to that Titantron. And now it seems like not only are they duplicating, but it's almost like they're looking for an excuse to duplicate. Like you said, there is four Charlottes, four Baileys, three Sasha Bankses, two yeah. Nikki Bells. It's like... Bro, just have one slot with multiple attires. And I know you can do the full entrance motion and the theme song and all that. So don't give me an excuse of, no, we don't have the ability. Like, you did it in last gen. You can do it in current gen. And, and I'll, I'll bounce off but counterpoint you a little bit because we've done, we've done this dance a few times. I don't have a problem with being able to play as the various people, which I know kind of kind of irks you, for cleanliness sake. I'm totally on board with it being compressed that way, yes. where you just go in and you've got Nikki Bella in both attires. Yes. Um, but I, I've always kind of liked the, um, the, the... And I think this would play into the arcade side of the game more if they did it this way, because you go and you play Super Smash Brothers, which is like an arcade-style fighting game, or you go and you play Mortal Kombat, and you can adjust the color of your attire. Yeah. Your attire, but you can have green scorpion fight yellow scorpion so yeah. like i don't have a problem with being able to have 2012 nikki bella versus 2016 nikki bella um playing against each other i don't have an issue with that um but i think for cleanness yes 
uh, side of it instead of scrolling through and seeing Nikki, Nikki, uh, I'm not going to do it alphabetically, but Nikki, Nikki, Becky, 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 Sasha, Sasha, Sasha. Yeah. It's yeah. like, or <laughs> just shrink it all down. Yes. Make it look a little like a DDR selection screen. If you've ever seen Dance Dance Revolution where it's like a wheel, yeah. a wheel of songs and you click the song and then it goes to like, choose your difficulty. Yeah. Structure it like that with the right. different layers. Funny thing is, uh, Cole Quill last year, who's a fictional character, had like seven attires. Yeah. But it's all right there. You just you pick the Cole Quinn and you just scroll through which one ever you want, and it's all right there. Yeah. It's it's just an organizational thing that it seems like they're almost too lazy to do. Yeah. Um, I don't remember if you expressly mentioned this one because I I thought I stole it from you, but it was the rollout feature, which I'm gonna just touch on. That was time. actually my last one as well. Well, there we go. We'll just align on this one, and mm -hmm. I'll just mention it. So the rollout feature, again, during the Money in the Bank ladder match became an issue because then four of us would roll out and we'd be unconscious doing the, I'd be doing the potentially futile button mashing um, to try and recover while Zelina and Rondo were tussling in the ring and then they'd set up the ladder and then you'd start to climb and then Bianca would get in, shove the ladder over, Zelina and Rondo would both roll out, I would just be getting up and it's like, what is this? What is going on? It's a dumb, it's a dumb feature. Well, the, the, the part that hurts the most is like in triple threat matches yeah. where two guys are going at it, you get rolled out and one guy pins another guy and you are not able to get up. Yeah. Like, not to mention it doesn't take, like once it happens once, it doesn't take a lot to make it happen again. Yeah. And so it's then oversaturated because you're, you get up, you get back in the ring, you're like, all right, let's go. They counter, they hit you with a, a strong grapple. You're on the ground, you're like, oh, and let me roll out again. Yeah. You're like, I was just, I just did this. Yeah. So it's it's irritating. I'm in here, like, I'll just, I'll read mine off again. It, it's it's just that get rid of quote unquote roll out mini game that comes up in matches with three superstars or more. P.S. I've deliberately not played these matches due to this feature. Takes away from enjoying the match and often costs my superstar the match. Scrap ASAP. Um, again, I deliberately have avoided triple threats, fatal four ways, all that, just because I know for a fact that this is an obstacle for me. Yeah. And again, I'm going to beat that dead horse again. In 2K14, none of these things are in there. Yeah. Like the restrictions and this and that. Like, And this is why last time when you said close to perfection i'm like he yeah, had 2k14 was was that game you know so <sighs> and so then i'll wrap it up my last one is consideration of difficulty when everything comes together and this is um this is just to say that when they go and they're finalizing things they're looking at the way things go together they need to take into account everything so and the example I wrote down, again, and I'm just picking specific things from my my playthroughs, yeah. is the Finn Balor versus the Bludgeon Brothers thing. There are so many things that put you at a disadvantage as Finn Balor in that situation that it it's n almost not even fair. Like, it's almost not fair yeah. for that match because they're heavier. They're both heavier. So when you first start the match, if you run at them, they're just going to no-sell you and then the other one's going to attack you. Yeah. So they're heavier because of the weight class. And then they both have more counters than you. I think you have, or maybe you have four and they each have four. But but either way, that's, you, that's twice as many yes. counters as you get. Yes. And they're going to actively counter you until they're down to one, which we learned last year. Yeah. So you have to, work, you, at that point, you need to work your way through six counters without running out of counters. <laughs> And so that's where having that that shut off for this match would come in handy, where you can just you can just counter endlessly. Sure, so can they. But if there's but at least that levels the playing yeah, field. Yeah, yeah. And then what was the other one? There was there was three components to this counter, and then the 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 hit detections. Um, sometimes you'll run at them and you'll try to you'll try to hit them. You'll miss, and then you're already at a disadvantage. Right. So then you you're you're fighting an uphill battle just to get back in the game, um, and then obviously the Velveteen Dream elbow thing. Yeah, yeah that yeah. should have just been coded into the match where if you get into that position, you're able to do the move. 
or it's just part of the cutscene where you it says hit your finisher and then when you activate your own finisher it goes to a little cutscene and you do the elbow drop and you win. You know the funny thing is I'm glad that you brought that up is because there are some moments in a match where I'm like we don't need a cutscene here like we yeah. could have I could have just it could have been regular gameplay. Yeah. But in moments like that where it's like just get to the cutscene and the cutscene will do the rest it's like okay that's fair that's good no problem or like if they said um, get two finishers and then you know hit hit a finisher. That will that will activate the cutscene. It's like okay, that's fair. That you kind of have to set it up. Just press the finisher button and the cutscene will do the rest for you. Yeah. So. Yeah, you're right. Like I guess it just comes down to like just test it, test the waters. Like does this make sense? Does it not make sense? You know. Um. Because at that point, then it's just it's literally just coding coding specific rules for a specific match which you're already doing. You just need to tweak it. Yeah. And, again, I'm not a game developer, but I don't think if you are, if you are, that it's that difficult. Yeah. I mean, again, they're patching in an entire mode, a creative championship mode. Exactly. So if you're able to do that, I don't see how minor things such as, you know, turning off reversal limits on the Finn Balor match, you know, um, you know, allowing for facial hair and hair to be changed, or compressing down you know the superstar slots. could you even have those match by match alterations in some of the towers like that's the thing where uh, right yeah play, playing through the the twisted nikki cross one um you'll see on the first one it's like your uh, ai modification yellow yellow body yellow health um one finisher and then yeah. the, later on it's Red uh, red health bar, red uh, damage, two finishers. Yeah. And so each match has its own things yep. set up. Yep. It's it's not that hard because they, they do it. They do it, yeah. But yeah, so we've made it. We've made it, guys. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, we, we talked about a lot here. Uh, you know, 2K's insincere message, in my opinion. Dan's uh, current, his overall feelings of you yeah, know, 2K20. It, then, by the next time we, we record, Things I'll might probably have finished my career mode and I'll okay. probably have dabbled in some other stuff. Okay. At which point I'll be able to tell you if my B ranking still stands. <laughs> um, and we completed our you know list of 10 for each. Um, but yeah, you guys let us know in the comment section. Do you guys concur with our list? Do you guys have a list of your own? Let us know. Uh, Dan, any final words? Yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. I think we've pretty much covered everything so far, uh, outside of, uh, 2K. Uh, fix your game. Please? Yeah. But always and forever, remember. Save your game. And do not turn off the console. Unless if 2K20 glitches out, then turn off the console. That's all I got. I'm, I got nothing else. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time.